Please stand. Christ is risen. Alleluia. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. He has conquered sin and Satan. Hallelujah. He has broken the power of death and the grave. Hallelujah. This is the day the Lord has made. Hallelujah. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May be seated for our opening hymn, it's hymn 451, See What a Morning. The choir will sing the first two verses of this beautiful new Easter hymn in our new hymnal. Congregations invited to join us for verse 3. Blessed are they whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed are they whose sin to the Lord does not count against them. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Almighty and merciful Father, we have strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed what we have devised and desired in our hearts. We have offended you and sinned against your holy law. We have done things that we should not have done, and we have not done those things that we should have done. Have mercy on us, Lord. Spare us, forgive us, and restore us according to your promises in Christ Jesus. 
God, our merciful Father, has forgiven all our sins. He sent his Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Redeemer and Savior. Jesus paid the penalty for our guilt by his death on the cross and freed us from death by his resurrection from the grave. We have peace with God, now and forever. Amen. May be seated for our next hymn, first three verses of hymn 443. pray together the prayer of the day. Almighty God, by the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you conquered death and opened the gate to eternal life. Grant that we, who have been raised with him through baptism, may walk in newness of life and ever rejoice in the hope of sharing his glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be dominion and praise, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament lesson for Easter Sunday is from the prophet Isaiah. We read in chapter 25, beginning at verse 6. Maybe many of you will be gathering with family and friends in a couple of hours for an Easter dinner, Easter meal. God's prophet uses that picture of a banquet, of a meal, to picture for us the blessings of salvation, especially that freedom from the fear of death. And that's what gives us joy and gladness today. On this mountain, the Lord of armies will prepare for all peoples a banquet of rich food, a banquet of aged wines, with the best cuts of meat and with the finest of wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the shroud that covers all peoples, 
the burial cloth stretched over all nations. He has swallowed up death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from every face. He will take away the shame of his people throughout the earth. For the Lord has spoken. On that day it will be said, Look, here is our God. We waited for him, and he saved us. This is the Lord. We waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Our psalm for today is Psalm 16b. This is the day. It's a new psalm for us, a new refrain especially. So listen carefully to the organist as she introduces it. We'll all join in the refrains, and the glory be to the Father at the end of the psalm. And we'll sing the psalm verses responsibly. The choir will sing the first half. The congregation sings the words in bold print. New Testament lesson from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. We read from what's often called the Great Resurrection chapter, chapter 15, beginning at verse 51. Here Paul describes events from the last day, from Judgment Day, when we will all be raised and given those bodies that are imperishable and immortal because our Savior Christ has conquered sin and death. Look, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we, we will all be changed in a moment, in the blink of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, 
and we will be changed. For this perishable body must put on imperishability, and this mortal body must put on immortality. But once this perishable body has put on imperishability, and this mortal body has put on immortality, then what is written will be fulfilled. Death is swallowed up in victory. Death, where is your sting? Grave, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The choir will now sing Anthem for Resurrection. Please stand for the reading of the Gospel. St. Luke's account of the resurrection from chapter 24. 
On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women went to the tomb carrying the spices they had prepared. They found that the stone had been rolled away from the tomb. When they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. When they, while they were wondering about this, suddenly two men stood by them in dazzling clothing. The women were terrified and bowed down with their faces to the ground. The men said to them, Why are you looking for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has been raised. Remember how he told you while he was in Galilee that the Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and on the third day rise again? Then they remembered his words. When they returned from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with, with them who told these things to the apostles. Yet these words seemed to them like nonsense, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over to look in, he saw only the strips of linen cloth. He went home, amazed at what had happened. The Gospel of the Lord. May be seated for the sermon hymn 440, verses from Christ Jesus Lay and Death's Strong Bands.
one of the other accounts of the resurrection of Jesus, records the words of the angels this way. He is not here. He is risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Amen. It's a common question that we often ask in lots of different situations. Why? Why? And sometimes we might hear the answer, because I said so. That's not a real satisfying answer to us most of the time, is it? For someone who wants to, wonder, wants to understand what is happening, it can come across sounding like, I don't need to explain myself to you. You don't need to know why I made the choice that I made. I want you simply to accept what I've done. It's probably hard for kids to hear that from their parents, right? Because I said so. Probably just as hard for parents to hear it from their kids when they get older. Why did you do that? Just because the thought process behind the decision remains a mystery and nobody really learns from the situation. Nobody grows from that experience when things are not explained well when the answer to the question why is simply because. Asking the question why might lead to an investigation. Why did these things happen the way that they did? What was it that caused those events? Curious minds want to find out more. And so they do some research. They maybe search the internet, maybe open up some books, talk to some people, watch, observe, so you can add knowledge, so you can add understanding to what we might call your, your internal reference library, your, your bank of information that you keep in your memory that you can go to again and again. People want answers, or at least as close as they can get to answering the question, why? Of course, we're not going to have answers to everything in life the way we might like to. We're not going to be able to explain the why in every situation we find ourselves in. We might see cause and effect. We might see a consequence of events. We might describe how things have happened. But sometimes we're stuck wondering about the why. Why did it happen? And when we reach the limits of our understanding, maybe sometimes we just simply have to throw up our arms in the air and say, I give in. I give up. And the answer to the question why remains just because. The question why is an important question for us here as we gather together on Easter Sunday. Why are we here? Why are we here in this building when we could be doing something different? We could be still in our pajamas at home, eating a leisurely breakfast, or maybe already getting together with family and friends to celebrate Easter brunch. Maybe we'd rather just sit and watch TV at home on Sunday morning. Why are we here? Why does the church service today feel different than some random weekend church service in the middle of July? Why are we singing the word Alleluia so much? The answer is because. Because of Jesus. The Apostle Paul wrote in his letter to the Romans, chapter 4, verse 25, Our Lord Jesus, He, was handed over to death. Why? Because of our trespasses and was raised to life. Why? Because of our justification. We're talking about cause and effect here. Things happen for a reason. Our Lord Jesus was handed over to death because of our trespasses. 
This is a sad scene that we've been meditating on the last few days here in our church services. It all stems from the fact that we have a history of trespassing. And I don't mean hopping over your neighbor's chain link fence onto some business property. I don't mean chasing your ball into the neighbor's yard over and over again and maybe lingering a little longer than you should, checking out what they have in their yard compared to your yard because of curiosity. Obviously, we're talking about something much more serious. If it meant that Jesus had to be handed over to death because of these trespasses. These trespasses are the fallings and the failings of our lives when we compare them to the standard of God's perfect holiness. Now that might not seem fair, that God would expect us to think and act like he does. But the Bible describes how man and woman were made in the image of God, and at first, they were able to think and to act in agreement with God's will. But since they chose not to follow God, and instead followed the lies of the devil, they and their descendants forever are guilty of living apart from God. That's us. We are guilty. We have turned away from God's holiness. We've pursued our own path. We have forfeited the eternal blessings that God promises as a reward for those who obey him. But instead of simply letting us face the consequences of our trespasses, God provided a way back to him. He handed over his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because of our trespasses. Think about that. It doesn't sound right, does it? Sounds like a horrible mistake was made. If this is really true, we should protest. The wrong judgment was made, or so it seems, and an innocent person died. When new evidence comes to light after a prisoner dies in prison or is executed, new evidence that clearly shows that someone else committed the crime, we are horrified. We're horrified that an innocent person died for the crimes of the person who is truly guilty. But that's exactly what it says here. An innocent person died for the crimes of a guilty person. Many guilty people. Jesus was handed over to death. Why? Because of our trespasses. Should we protest? Should we get angry at God for doing this? Or are you relieved that it was Jesus? And not you that had to suffer the punishment for your sin. Why are we here on Easter morning? Why are we singing the Hebrew phrase over and over again, Alleluia, praise the Lord? We're horrified by the death of God's Son that He died for our sins. And we're so grateful for the death of God's Son that He died for our sins. The Apostle Paul says that the sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. Because of our sin, death stings. The wages of sin is death. Without sin, if we never fell away from God, there would be no death. But the good news is this. Our Lord Jesus Christ, he was raised to life. Why? Because of our justification. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul writes in Romans chapter 8, So then there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For in Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. Whatever sins are bothering you today, I'm telling you, God has forgiven them. Whatever they are, your curses, your lust, 
your anger, your meanness, your selfishness, your lovelessness, your betrayal, your unfaithfulness, whatever it is that clearly shows that you are a sinful person who has definitely not obeyed God's law. It's been completely removed from God's record book. Jesus was raised to life. Why? Because of your justification. Once again, we've got a cause and effect here. Our justification was the reason Jesus was raised from the dead. The difference is that our trespasses caused something horrible. Our justification caused something wonderful. Our trespasses come from us, our sinful, rebellious nature. Our justification comes from a gracious and merciful and loving God. What is our justification? Our justification is that declaration from our holy God that he has accepted the sacrifice of his son for our sins. God announces that our guilt has been completely paid for. In the eyes of God, we are not guilty. Why? Because Jesus died for our trespasses. So, we are not to face punishment for our sins. We are no longer condemned. That announcement from heaven, from the judgment throne of God, was made when God gave life back to his Son. And Jesus Christ rose from the dead. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is a powerful statement that God has made to our world. In a sense, it can throw into confusion our everyday experience of life. Those who have died can't live again, right? Or can they? We haven't witnessed Jesus walking and talking and eating after he rose from the dead, but some people did on Easter and for a number of days after Easter. What does that mean for us? It means that even death, which is so much a part of our human experience, has met its match. Death, which common sense would point to as the end of life, has its definition reworked. Jesus assures us, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me will live, even if he dies. Whoever believes in me will live, even if he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never perish. Long before the Son of God came into the world to live and die in our place, the Lord God told his people to anticipate the end of death as we know it. We heard it earlier from Isaiah chapter 25. On this mountain he will destroy the shroud that covers all peoples, the burial cloth stretched over all nations. He has swallowed up death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from every face. He will take away the shame of his people throughout the earth. For the Lord has spoken. Today is a victory celebration. There are times when we witness the joy of friends and family as they cheer inside and outside the courtroom when the guilty are condemned and the innocent are set free. Or when the criminal receives his punishment and the victim or the victim's family can find some relief and begin the process of healing. That's the kind of joy and excitement that we should have today. Except we are the criminals, not the victims. Jesus died for our trespasses. And the merciful judge gives us his life-changing verdict. Not guilty. And we get to live as free people. Jesus' resurrection tells us that the sentence of hell has been taken away from us because our Heavenly Father accepted the sacrifice of His Son's innocent life as payment for our guilt. He was raised to life. Why? Because of our justification. 
Believe that Jesus rose from the dead for you. And celebrate. Celebrate God's mercy and forgiveness to you every day. Your joy and your hope in Jesus Christ might come across as strange or even sometimes inappropriate to those who don't believe it. But it's a powerful testimony to people when we show that hope and joy in our lives, even when we're hurting, even when we're grieving, even when we're struggling. That's the power of Jesus' resurrection, and we pray the Holy Spirit leads other people to believe in it so they can enjoy a new life, free forever from the punishment of sin and from the power of death. Why was Jesus handed over to death? Why was Jesus raised to life? Those are good questions to ask. And the answers to those questions tell us a lot about our Creator God and His desire that we live with Him forever. His desire that we live here now under the grace of His daily forgiveness for all of our sins and that we enjoy life forever in the glory of heaven where there is no more sin or sadness or death, but only life. Because we could not save ourselves, God sent his son to save us. That's why we celebrate. That's why we celebrate Jesus' death. That's why we celebrate Jesus' resurrection. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Praise the Lord. Amen. Please stand. And now God's peace, which goes far beyond our human understanding, will guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us join together now in the Easter Creed. We believe that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Peter and then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers at the same time. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all, he appeared to the apostle Paul. We believe that Christ has indeed been raised from the dead the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. But each in his own turn, Christ the first fruits, then when he comes, those who belong to him, then the end will come, when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father after he has destroyed all dominion, authority, and power. We believe that Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in him will live, even though they die. And whoever lives and believes in him will never die. Amen. Please be seated. In a moment, we're going to hear a beautiful rendition of uh, the Hallelujah Chorus on the organ. I appreciate Mrs. Teklin's talents in playing that. Um, welcome to all of you, including our guests and, and uh, relatives of members. Uh, we're glad to have you here to celebrate our Savior's resurrection. Please take a moment, if you haven't already done so, to sign the red Friendship Register. You'll find along the center aisle of each pew. And if you're worshiping with us for the first time, we appreciate if you list, give us some kind of contact number so we can acknowledge your visit. We now hear a portion of the Hallelujah Chorus.
stand and pray. Page 9 in your worship folder, the response of prayer for Easter. Include a, include a couple uh, special mentions in our prayers. First of all, um, God in his wisdom has led our the teacher we called to serve as first and second grade teacher next year. This is Jessica Klubal to accept that call. And then we also report that Mrs. Erin Martin has received the call. She teaches seventh and eighth grade here at Lamb of God School and has received the call to teach at Peace Lutheran School in Hartford. So we include them in our prayers. Lord of life, fill our hearts with joy this day, for you have risen and conquered the grave. Imprint that message of victory on our hearts and implant it in our minds. Through the good news of your resurrection, renew our hope and revive our faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. By baptizing us into your name, you've connected us to your death and rising. You've put our sin to death and have given us a new life. Enable us each day to think of ourselves as dead to sin and alive to you, so that we may walk in newness of life in all we do. Lord, in your mercy, in this fallen world, death and sorrow surround us. Touch the hearts of those who grieve the loss of a Christian they love. Direct their eyes to your empty tomb and ease their pain by reminding them that their loved ones will one day rise again. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, many people grieve without hope. Let the message of resurrection reach them and awaken faith in their hearts. Use us as your instruments to bring the word of life to their souls and the message of hope to their hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Stay by the side of all who are suffering. In your wise mercy, heal those who are sick, receiving treatment for illness, recovering from illness or surgery, or hurting in body or mind. Remind them that your victory over death is a fact and comfort them with your promise to raise them and give them and all believers new glorified bodies like yours. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord, you are always true to your word, so we're not amazed, but we're most thankful that you've blessed us with a new called servant for our Lamb of God school. Bless Mrs. Klubal in the remaining months of her present service and allow for a true, smooth transition to her service among us. Give strength and provide safely to all involved as they help her move and, and, and also her husband's act and settle into the work that you've placed before us in this part of your vineyard. And be with, with, be with Mrs. Martin as she deliberates the two calls she now has. Uh, if it is your will, Lord, we, of course, would wish that she would stay here to work among us. But in your wisdom, bring her to a decision that's best for your kingdom. We ask all this in your name, dear Savior. And now hear us, Lord, as we pray in silence. Risen Savior, feed our faith with the message of your resurrection. Come to us in your word and in the feast of your sacrament to sustain and strengthen us until we feast with you in eternal glory. Amen. And in our Savior's name we join together in praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Maybe seated for our closing hymn.
441, selected verses, I know that my Redeemer lives. Greetings once again and welcome to all of you in the name of the risen Lord Jesus. We're glad to have you all here, especially our guests and visitors who are with us today. Hope you'll come back and worship with us again soon. Please be sure to read through all the items in your Woodlawn Weekly News. I want to make special uh, uh, announcement in connection with uh, thanks to all the musicians who participated in our services today. The uh, Dee and Nancy on keyboard, the Wendorf family on trumpets and uh, clarinet and especially to Sophie first time playing in church on her trumpet um, and thanks to our flower committee and those of you who may have donated flowers or or offerings for the purchase of flowers to beautify our uh, uh, altar area this this weekend and with that God's blessings to all of you and a blessed Easter to all of you <laughs>